This video is about how to visually evaluate point forecasts using R. Up to this point in the class, uh, we've gone through uh, five out of the six steps of the forecasting process. We've talked about defining problems and gathering information, and we've learned how to do exploratory analysis, how to choose and fit models, and how to make forecasts. And now we're going to learn about the final step in that forecasting process, evaluating those forecasts to see how well they actually work. Let's go ahead uh, and get set up with the basic uh, data and packages that we need for doing this. We're going to continue to use the forecast package, so we'll load that using library and forecast. We'll also use ggplot for some graphing, so another library call and ggplot2 will get that loaded for us. We're going to keep working with the NDVI data that we've worked with so far. So we can load that uh, data from the portal time series uh, down here. And we'll say data is equal to read.csv and then uh, the data that we want to load in. So the portal time series.csv file. And then we'll extract the NDVI time series uh, like we have before and store it in a variable called NDVITS. And remember, we do this using the TS function. And then we get the column uh, that we want out of our data frame. That's data dollar sign NDVI. And then we tell R about the time series aspects of this data. And so it starts in 1992 in the third month. It ends in 2014 in the 11th month. And it has a frequency of 12 because it's monthly data. So there's 12 months in each year. And we can use the TS display function to get a quick visualization of that time series and some of the autocorrelation structure uh, within it, like we've done before. And because I'm zoomed in for teaching, that's going to cause us some issues. So I'm going to just set things really quickly so that we can actually visualize things for class. And we can see that our time series looks like it has before, a lot of seasonal ups and downs. Uh, and then that's re reflected in the autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation functions, uh, where we see that we've got uh, positive autocorrelation at really short time scales, uh, and also uh, showing up out here at the annual time scale. There's that seasonal signal. So now that we have our time series, uh, how are we going to work on evaluating forecasts based on it? There's two general approaches to evaluating forecasts. The first is to make predictions for the actual future, wait until time passes and collect new data about the state of the future, and then see how well the forecast performed. And in a lot of ways, this is the gold standard, but it requires waiting for time to pass. And so it's not a great way to go about developing models in the short term. Therefore, a lot of the work developing forecasting models focuses on something called hindcasting or backcasting, where we split an existing time series into two pieces, a piece at the beginning where we train the model, and then a held out piece at the end that we use to test the forecasts resulting from that model. And for those of you familiar with cross-validation, this is just a special version of cross-validation that recognizes autocorrelation in the time series and the fact that time is directional. 
So to split this time series data into training data and test data, we'll use the window function. The first argument to the window function is the time series that we want pieces of. And so uh, ndvi underscore ts. And then the second part are arguments for the start point and the end point in the time series that we want to keep in this window. And so let's go ahead and make the first uh, part of this data, ndvi underscore train, and we'll assign it the output from window, and we could give it a start and an end, but in this case, uh, since we want to go from the beginning of the time series to some point, we can just say end is equal to uh, the end point. And so let's leave three years of data for evaluating the forecast. And so we'll go up through 2011 uh, in the 11th month. And so this says, uh, give me uh, a chunk of the NDVI time series object that starts at the beginning of that object and ends in November of 2011. And if we look at this now, we can see that the NDVI time series uh, is 273 time steps long, uh, but our training data set is only 237 time steps long because we've left off uh, that last 36 time steps. And then we can do the same thing to get the test data. And so we want NDVI underscore test. This is the end of the time series. So we'll think of it as being the portion of the time series that we're making forecasts for. So again, we'll say window. So we want a window of, a chunk of the NDVI time series data set. And now, we want to give it a starting point. And so we want to start in the month following where we ended our training time series. And so we'll say 2011, uh, but now start in December because we ended our training data set in November. And we don't need it to, pro we don't need to provide an end value because we're going to go all the way through the end of the time series. And so here we can now see that our test data set is 36 time steps long, and it starts uh, in 2012. So it's the end of the time series. Now that we've done that, we want to go through the standard steps that we've gone through for making forecasts before. So first, we want to fit a model to our data. So we'll call that a REMA model. And we'll start with uh, a non-seasonal ARIMA. So we'll use auto.arima like we have before to find the best possible ARIMA model. And now instead of fitting this model to the full time series, we're going to fit it just to the training part of the time series. And so we'll say NDVI train for our data. And then let's set seasonal equals false. So we get the non-seasonal model. Having fit that model, we then want to make forecasts from it. And so uh, we will say ARIMA forecast equals, and we use the forecast function to do this. The forecast function, if you'll remember, takes two arguments, the model that we fit to some data, a REMA model, and then H, which tells our how many time steps into the future we want it to forecast. And we've held out 36 months of data for evaluating our forecast, so we want to make 36 months worth of forecast. So H is equal to 36. 
And what we're going to focus on in this video is visual evaluation of our forecast. So making graphs that would see how well our forecast is operating. We can start by looking at the forecast time series graphs that we've made before, but by including the observed data on those forecasts. So if you'll remember, we can plot the data that a model is fit to, as well as the forecasts from that model uh, using the auto plot function, if we want to display this as a ggplot object. And so we say auto plot, and then our forecast, so arima underscore forecast. And if we run this, this is the graph we generated in the last lesson, where we have the empirical data that the model was fit to, and then 36 months worth of forecast following it, along with these uncertainty uh, windows, these prediction intervals, uh, where 80% of the data should fall in this dark blue interval, and 95% of the data should fall in this white blue interval. We can add the empirical data to this graph using a function called auto layer. And so uh, like with other ggplot functions, we can do this by hitting the plus sign to add something to the existing ggplot object. And then we can say auto layer parentheses and then provide it with the test data in the form of a time series. And so for us, that's ndvi underscore test. And if we run this, we'll now see that we have the same basic graph that we produced before, but we also have our test data on it represented uh, by the pink line. And what this shows us is that while the average is pretty good, it kind of runs give or take through the middle of the data, uh, it doesn't capture uh, the observed ups and downs from the actual data, right? And so uh, this is something, but it's, it's probably not really the ideal model that we would like to have in this situation. There's another way to visually evaluate forecasts that takes a, a step towards being a little bit more quantitative. We're just kind of looking at this right now and deciding uh, whether or not it looks good or not. So let's do another visualization that's a little bit more quantitative. And those are observed predicted plots. And the idea behind observed predicted plots is that they have the predicted value on the x-axis and the observed value on the y-axis, and they allow us to see if they're closely related to one another, which is what we would like. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll uh, plot this just using the base r plot function. And remember that our forecasts are stored uh, inside this ARIMA forecast object, and they're stored in the mean value here. So we type ARIMA forecast dollar sign mean to get out the point forecasts. So those are our predicted or forecast values. Those will go on the X. And then our observed values are in NDVI underscore test. And if we run this, we'll get a graph that looks like this one. And it looks a little strange for an observed predicted plot because both of the X and Y values are time series. And so R will naturally connect them uh, with, connect the points uh, through time with lines, 
and then label them. And so this is the first time point, the second time point, the third time point, and so on. In some cases, this can be really useful for understanding what's going on uh, with a time series, but at the moment, uh, for us, it just gives us a big mush uh, over here on the right-hand side. So let's remove that. And we can do that by converting both of these time series objects into vectors before we make uh, the plot. And we do that using the as.vector function. And so we'll run as.vector on our predictions and as.vector on our observations uh, before we run this. And now we'll get out a scatter plot. And it doesn't look great, but, but let's add one more element before we talk about that which is that typically when we're doing observed predicted plots, we want to include a one-to-one -one line. And that's the line where the predictions and the observed values are equal to one another, which would mean that we'd made a perfect prediction, at least based on the point forecast. And we can add that here using the AB line function and providing it with an intercept of zero and a slope of one. And so uh, if we look at this result now, we have uh, the basics of our one-to-one -one plot. We've plotted the predicted values on the x, the observed values on the y, and we have this one-to-one -one line showing us where those two values are equal to one another. We can see that there's some relationship between the observed and predicted values for a couple of points, but because our model quickly converges to the mean after just a few time steps, there's basically no variation in our predictions uh, after those first few time steps. And so we just get uh, this horizontal set of points uh, here on the edge because there's no variation in the prediction. In an ideal one-to-one -one plot, uh, we would tend to have points closely following this line without a lot of variation around it uh, and not being biased. So not having more points on one side of the one-to-one -one line than the other. Uh, when making sort of formal, final one-to-one uh, -one plots, you often want to make these boxes square uh, and have uh, which lets the one-to-one -one line then go directly from corner to corner and makes it easy to see these things. Uh, and so that's a worthwhile extra step uh, if you're doing these yourself. So that's the basic idea behind how to visually evaluate a forecast. When evaluating forecasts, we often use something called hindcasting or backcasting. We take the first set of the time series fit our forecasting model to it, make forecasts from it, and then evaluate those forecasts on the end of the time series. And we use the window function to split the data between that first portion and the last portion for training and testing. We can visually compare the forecast to the observed dynamics using the autoplot function to plot the training data and the forecasts and the auto layer function to add the uh, observed data from that test portion of the data. And then we can make observed predicted plots where we put the predicted value from the forecast on the X and the observed value uh, from our held out test data on the Y. And we include a one to one line that shows where those two things are equal. And in a good forecast, we'll see the points clustered around the line with not too much variance. And now it's your opportunity to try this stuff out. So go ahead and do this same process of splitting up the data, 
and visually evaluating your forecasts, but using a seasonal ARIMA instead of a non-seasonal ARIMA. And now for the main event of your morning. It's time to learn how to evaluate forecasts. <laughs> 